God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus just for who you are. I thank you for all that you're doing, God, in this season, God. I'm a human, so I first look at the season. I check the season where I am. I need a a place, a foundation, a point to to come from before I can go other places in uh, ministry, go other places and talk about who you are to me. I can't really uh, relate to people and tell them God did this for me and help them to understand the extreme obscurity, the extreme abstractness, the extreme artistic nature of your your deeds. I can't do that unless I have a starting point. So in the season my starting point must be the season my starting point must be this time my starting point must be 6 30 in the morning my starting point must be i'm on my way to the gym my starting point must be i am healthy my starting point must be i have life my starting point must be and more abundantly my starting point must be i'm praying my starting point must be i'm on my knees my starting point must be god still has me my starting point must be i still have him my starting point must be holy spirit has me my starting point must be i have him my starting point must be jesus never left me my starting point is he went to the cross my starting point must be for the joy set before him my starting point must always remain he endured me and you he endured us at the cross my starting point remains at the end of all of that my starting point must be past all of that past everything my past anything past your some things past all these things our starting points must be the cross Oh, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. The gospel is wrapped up tight. See, I think that's why that, that, that scripture fits right for most people. Oh, amen. Y'all, y'all, we good, right? You, we, we, we be talking all day anyway. I spent 12 hours total with him. I didn't realize it. He said, Jamie, look at the clock. At 6 o'clock last night. He said, you've been with me for 12 hours, no TV. If I had church, I had interactions. But they were not a distraction. I had interactions, but they were not a disruption. I had interactions, but they led to adding to the gospel, fitting me and me learning from it. Uh, Pastor Randy, David, Pastor Kiesecker, those were my main interactions yesterday. And in that, even David Hadigi is Pastor David Hadigi. And in those interactions, I found Jesus. If I do not find Jesus in what you're saying, then you cannot interact or be an actor or act in my show. I cannot have you as a that's even a, a, a customer. You can't even buy tickets. I don't even let you pass the door. See, that's 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 the that's the problem with some of us. Because Jesus says, because I, because behold, I come, I stand at the door and knock, and we don't remember who our starting point is. We don't remember where the gospel is wrapped up into. So where, where our starting point should be, we get uh, tossed and turned and uh, go aside. We are troubled. What did Paul say? Oh, I'm, I'm troubled. I am not perplexed. We are both troubled and perplexed. Because we don't find ourselves anchored. Here go my soul again. He, he was following David yesterday. Oh, Christ. The, y'all don't understand. It's my, it's my soul, British Jesus. It's my soul. <laughs> it's definitely his, I love British people. But I think he has a British accent when he sings certain songs. That's the only, that's the only the point of reference or control I have over the situation. I'm talking to people and in the midst of the conversation, while David, he, David kept singing, my, my hope is built on nothing less. That's what he's singing. And then, and my soul kept joining in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the melody of it. Y'all know? Anybody sang you choir when you were young? That, that, that song that was the round, I think, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah, I say the alto, that's that soprano, hallelujah, 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 it's epic, because we want to sing, uh, we, I'm trying to get her, we want to touch Jesus when we sing, because that's our only opportunity, so if I can't scratch Jesus' nose hairs when I'm singing, I'm not doing, I'm going, if I'm going to reach, I'm going to reach out, right? so, hallelujah, 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 he is what the Father, uh, no, that's not the one. Oh, praise has be. That's the other one. Right, right, right. There's a song where the tenors will come in. My, my hope is built on nothing less, right? And then, and then, and then somebody will say, Oh, Christ the Son. And so my, my soul sings that song. It always sings it in the key of F, G minor. Um, tech, uh, popsicles, uh, toe nails in here. He always sings it so low, I had to bend down 
when I said that, just now, y'all see the soul oh, that I can never reach him to sing with him. I can't hold his hand when he's singing with it. I think my soul thing is Timmy, but he got the voice of Thomas in him. He he walks around like Timmy sometimes. The mind full of emotions takes over, but when it's time to praise God, he comes right along in it and puts up the mic and says, "My." He was singing louder in his mic yesterday than David Lewis and and um, the Booty Ears and and and, and the Cassandra Dagonauts, the Dagonauts and um. Uh, Libby's, all of them, all three Davids, all seven Davids combined in one. He outdid them, rolled them over, and pushed them aside. He got up and he thought he could sing yesterday because I spent my time with God. I make jokes about it. But if you, if you train your soul to seek Jesus and not other things, your soul loves Jesus. I told you. My soul loves Jesus. Oh God, my soul, get that starting point, loves Jesus, bless his name. My soul, see, some people will have their security in you and that will jack them up. It's because of the fact that they did not catch it when they, when you first came, the access point. When you became true north to them, they did not catch it and reverse the process and say, oh no, this is Jamie, this is a human, she is not a star, right? She's a star in her own play maybe, but I don't know what she's got going on, but she's not going to be a star in my play. I catch this, catch it, check it, change it. They didn't check the thoughts and they didn't change it when they had an opportunity to do so. I don't think there's any change that I could do that will last me in my thoughts. I have a conversation with God all the time. I had it last night with him. I told him, listen, I'm going to need you to... um." Be my father and step in right now because I, I'm charging this atmosphere, but I can't change it. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and so I, I went to sleep and Holy Spirit had what happened yesterday rolling in my spirit. Rolling, 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 rolling. I'm still holding on for dear life, broken hearted. The people that were there had no idea that someone standing there broke my heart yesterday again. And I, and I, that, that's all I'm holding on. And I'm, I'm, I'm surfing. I'm, I'm, I'm swimming. I'm doing whatever I gotta do. But I'm still holding on. My body is flailing. I see my body flailing. My feet are going back and forth. But I'm holding on. For dear life. Because if I, if I let go, you ever been centripetal force and centripetal acceleration? The point, the access point, look at your washing machine and imagine if I, if you, you start your washing machine and you take the casing off of it. Can you see it with me? Let's imagine the way that it spins. Imagine what would happen if, if, if you took the casing off of it and you just let it swing. What would eventually happen if the washing machine was running actively with not clothes, but people or oh, inside of it what would happen to those people they would fly off of it in a straight line right tangential to the point at which they left that, that point on that circle they would fly off at a, in a straight line tangential to the, the actual sphere the circle um, the point at which they left they would no longer have an access point they would have a leaving point they would not have an access point if you remove the security if you remove the boundary of the outside of the washing machine I no longer it can tend to feel like I no longer have an access point to hold on to I have a point of exit in this play hallelujah and so sometimes in life I'm gonna tell you this much when we get to the point where we start worshiping people yes 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 and we start worshiping things God will, because he loves you. Here we go. Because he loves you. Because he got that, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Oh, yet you give yourself away. Oh, the overtakes. It's worth repeating. Never ending reckless love of God. He wasn't worried about the, the, the rhyming or the repetition of the lines. He said, oh, the overwhelming reckless, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found, leaves the 99. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. 
all the overwhelming love and the, about that rhyme some of us we want a Francesca it we want a Stephen Curtis Chapman it we want a John P. Key it we want a here we go my last pastor he's a great um, musical singer Alvin Darling size it we want a um, Donnie Clark in size in it we want a uh, Kiara Shearer size in it we want to make sure the lines end up exactly where they are supposed to be and match but what happens when you just lift your hands and sing to the King of Kings and sing to the man that saves you and sing to the, the man that secures you and because what happens if I'm in the washing machine you want to know a, a picture of how security works with ID if I'm holding on to that piece I said I'm, I see myself flaring on around, flaring around my legs are flaring but I'm holding on to my access point if I'm holding on to my access point, that the access ID point, I'm IDing with the washer. With what's, what's going on right now is I'm being washed, right? I'm, I'm getting washed, right? I, I gotta get cleansed, right? I, I've, I've confessed and I come before the man that, that is both faithful and just. I only meet faithful and just God when I confess. Get it right, understand it. James 5.16, I think, tells us, no, that's not, that's not the one that tells us. Somebody told us in James, they said, or Hebrews, that's what it is, the Hebrews. He said, if you confess your sins, I don't care where, that. Bible says it, you find that that's your business. And the Bible says if you confess your sins, he is both faithful, that's my right hand and just, that's my left to forgive me and to cleanse me. I don't care where it is in the Bible, right? Cleanses me, he still does it from all unrighteousness. Ask the plastic catacombs, they can tell you where it is. I'm not looking at that. The point is, I will meet King of Kings and Lord of Lords when I confess, because then I need cleansing. I'll confess Jesus, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Well, I, do, I need to say that. I need to admit that it will not happen if I don't confess. If I don't say it out loud with my mouth, I will never meet that. Who, he that is faithful and just. Who God, he cannot forgive me and cleanse me if I don't confess it. That's what he's saying. You will never meet both faithful and just God. As a matter of fact, you may meet hellfire. I'm sending you away, God. You may meet depart from me, God. If you don't actually introduce, do show yourself to confess, God. You will meet depart from me, God. Because there's no person that lived on this earth but Jesus that had a, a reason never to have to confess. And he still found himself praying and addressing God all the time. So if Jesus can do it, so can you. And he wasn't ashamed of the gospel that came out of his mouth. Because I told myself before, I said, why am I ashamed of this? I said, why am I ashamed of the things that are going on in my life? I don't got no reason to be ashamed because I ain't trying to impress nobody. Who doing better than me? Nobody. Because ah, they can't do Jamie's life better than I've done it and to get to this point most people would be dead already you can't tell me you wouldn't be dead already because I tried to kill myself many times so sit up and tell me come my face and tell me that you can do Jamie's life better than Jamie has already done it likewise I cannot do your life better than you have done it so nobody has a reason to judge you you judge you and as a result you find yourself on the, the list we said perception condition position and station you trying to get to the station of royalty where God says you should be but you find yourself locked into perception because you are confused walking in the shame of what others think of you and what they might be thinking and Jesus went to Calvary and he eradicated all shame didn't he? for the joy set before him he endured the cross and he did it naked I heard and so what a worse shame is that right? having grown men beat up on you when you were grown man not saying anything about it and them doing it to you naked we we hear about them stripping his clothes off of him and selling his clothes selling them getting money for them casting lots for them they put a robe on him but when did they say they put um underwear back on him did they have some spare underwears underwears hanes on the side, did they go to the Pope, rip the, the underwear off the Pope's head and put it on Jesus? No. And the Pope don't got nothing to offer me. He experienced this shame as well. He gave nothing. I don't owe the Pope nothing. And just when the veil was torn, when Jesus was on the cross, the Pope can't come along and zip it back up because he was not there. Neither was the gecko that they worship. Neither was the geico that they be worshiping. Neither does Haynes and Michael Jordan that the Pope, Pope worship, worships, you know, because that's where he get his clothes. That's where he get his hats, his beanies. I don't need beanies. I got, I got Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the risen, uh, you know, that's him, the living God. He's a risen Savior, Son of the living God. I got him. I don't need nobody else. I don't need Haynes. That's the Pope. He needs that. I don't need that. Can I get a witness? My perception does not lie. And your, your, your thought of me 
my perception of me does not lie in your thoughts of me. I've gotten past that. When I do slip back down to that, because we say four levels, but God said it's perception of me slash um, um, uh, my, my thoughts on people's perception of me slash my, how I perceive God thinks of me. Because that's a lot of the enemy. So that's not actually there, but we put it there. Not realizing that God never falls into a perception of you. He views you in your station as king and queen. But the enemy will tell you, God didn't do that for you. God don't want you to have that. The enemy will tell you God perceives you lower than you do. That's why you always fall into perception. What I think of me, what others think of me, and what God thinks of me. Perception. But God doesn't perceive you. God stationed you. You are the, it does not matter what you do. He said, for you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He stationed you there. You are stationed. No matter what you do, no matter how bad life flips your legs back and forth. It's almost like you saw, you, 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 you ever see those people that, um, that, that put their feet on the water, it's kind of like water skiing, but they hold on to a boat. That's kind of what I see. The feet are going everywhere, but the person, as long as they hold on to that one thing, their arms are stationary, so that keeps them, as long as they keep their strength in their arms, that keeps them still. But their legs are flopping back and forth like two fish. What is going on with that? What, what about that could make you feel happy? We're about, we about to go into it. God just, God just said it. We're about to go into it. As I tell you, finish explaining the washing machine edict. Right here. He just showed it to me because somehow my, I'm taking clothes out the dryer and somehow I hit the button to the dryer and it started, just started going. So I came in, of course, I heard um, some activity upstairs, I think. I don't know. I don't care. My perception of her is not that she controls my life. So what I want to wash clothes at 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, it's not her business. I never hear her wash her clothes, so that, 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 maybe it's jealousy. I don't have a wash. I don't know. I don't care. That's the that's perception of, of my perception of others or perception of what others think of me. See, that, that will lock you in on the bottom rung. That's why you gotta, it, it, I don't care. I told them yesterday, Pastor Kesek, Pastor David Lewis, y'all understand, I was talking to pastors the whole day. And then Pastor David Digis came by and gave us a little illustration, you know. I find myself in the front of the church. I can talk to worship leaders. I can talk to pastors. I cannot find myself talking to lay Laodiceans people. They, they, they lay members that are Laodicean people. They don't want more from God than what they just see on the outside. I can't stand surface people. I, y'all, the surface walkers, I can't stand that. I either go out and take a dive and dip in the water. I need some danger in my life. I need some drama. I need to go on an expedition. I can't stand no way walking, sand licking. I don't want to go nowhere, stay on the shore and be safe. You won't get no, you won't go nowhere. You right, but you, you won't get hurt. You, 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 you're almost there. Because what, what will happen is you don't, you won't go nowhere and you won't risk anything, but you also won't get any reward in it. Because if you don't risk with there, where there's no risk, there is no reward. There is an upward because faith gets you into heaven. Amen. But if you don't do anything with the faith that you have, you will not be rewarded. Jesus told them that too. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, you don't work your faith out. So you will not see your faith evidence. They were all given the measure of faith. So he wasn't calling them faithless and perverse because they didn't have faith. He was calling them faithless and perverse because they didn't use it. And as a result of them not using it, it was misused and abused because it sat on the side, fat like Buddha, eating everybody's cupcakes right here and just getting fat on everybody's comfort food. That's what Buddha does in my mind. He just eats everybody's comfort food. That's why you go to him. Because you, you guys can share cupcakes and cookies. You guys can get fat with each other. I'm trying to exercise. That's why I'm on my way to watch someone. I want to meet Jesus at the pool. I want to do some exercise. I don't want to be with Buddha eating everybody's comfort food. I, I got rid of the comfort food. I don't want that outside my house. So, and one more time, when he told them, oh, faithless and perverse generation, he wasn't saying to them they were faithless because they did not have a faith. They had it. They just not, did not, did not, did not use it. And his job being there the whole time, oh, faithless, oh, faithless, oh, faithless, oh, ye of little faith, oh, ye of little faith, oh, ye of little faith, his job the whole time being there sounds like to me. But the disciples was to teach those 12 men how to activate and use their faith. He, he said, this is faith, use it, and then he performed miracles. See what I can do because I got faith. That's 
I'm broke. You ain't going to move that mountain. Get out of my way. Demons, people, I don't care. Huh? She, her focus is on me, so I'm moving her mountains too. I don't care. I don't prejudice. You got a mountain, I'm moving it. Because the, the Bible does not say, oh, faithless and perverse generation, right? Uh, if you, did, if you ha- didn't have the, the faith the size of a mustard seed, it says, if you, you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain. It does not say you could say to your mountain. I don't go in the hills to see when we drive through there, if you look like sound of music, I don't see in the hills, the hills are alive. I don't, yeah, Mary, um, Mary Poppins, she know too, whatever, uh, Julie Andrews, she know that song too. I don't, I don't see no mountains and hills that say Julie on it. Nothing that say Jamie. I gotta go to Switzerland to get my mountains, excuse me, I gotta go get some mountains. I'm not, I don't see that. I can get my mountains in Hagerstown. We got mountains here. We still got mountains because you here and you've been here for 75,000 years, you fossil, and you didn't want to move your mountains. You said you could remove this mountain and cast it into the sea. So why do I still see so much, so many mountains bordering us in? This is the, it should be a, 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 a plateau. God should look down and say, wait a minute, what happened to who said what to who? Now where my mountains at? Where's my, Holy Spirit, did you move Mount Sinai again? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that, was, that was so serious about it when I did it. I heard them say it. It should be like that. I don't, I don't know. I, didn't, I don't remember moving it. I just, I was talking to some, I was talking to, I don't know. What happened? Oh, I have, Jesus, my God, you better, let I me mean, kick the wall. What happened to Mount Moriah? Oh, Father, I got to tell you, God, too much faith took place on Mount Moriah. That's why it ended up a bust. Stop. Uh, it was a mountain you were crossed over, right? Uh, and then when Jesus, the, when they took them to Calvary, that was Mount Moriah, it became a bust. Stop. You can't stop, devil. You can't go no further. Stop. Don't you pass. Go. Don't you collect 200 dollars. You go straight to jail. No, you go to hell, right? Because I, remember there was nothing on the Monopoly board that was scary. Except that one thing. You know, you, you know you're coming up on that, that man. And you, you, you even got the profile of you. Both of you, his, his view was scary. His line was, his lines was off the hook. His line, body, arm, finger, you do it. So he only had like, <laughs> he only had lines, his lines. You know how you, I, when, I, when I, I photograph myself with these things, I pay attention to my lines. I just pop pictures, but I know what I'm doing. I pay attention to my lines. You pay attention to your lines, you study lines. You can just move and hit the, I do, click, 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 that's what I do. I don't want to be looking at my face in the camera like that, so I, I pay attention to the lines. I know set up of, uh, uh, set up of distance and dissonance and all those things. I factor them in and also, also not forgetting about my, what's my access point, my ID and my security. He said, he said, this proof came and this is what you, when I said that, he said, cause I said, where's my son? <laughs> Where's my sign? I thought the Holy Spirit mm, look at the things like that they lost it. I think it's almost like they do. He showed me a play of what goes on in heaven. To say, almost to say that to, they're being facetious, but also trying to show me what to say to you guys. Just like I saw earlier, myself holding on to the back of a boat, and all I see is my head, the back of my head. But it's like a video game, and my feet are going every which way. I'm on skis, but I'm on the water, and so I'm holding on to this boat. My hands are still, but it's a video game, and the object of the game is to make it. Wherever I'm going, wherever the goal takes me, it's supposed to be fun. But if it's not fun, that's not the goal. The goal is for me to get where I need to go so I can, I can pass, go collect $200, go to the next level. I'm not going to the next level in the game or in God if I can't hold on. If I can't, if I can't hold on to my, my, my ID, I gotta, it's like those clothes in the washing machine. It's spinning, 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 spinning. And the ID will be the center of the thing inside the washing machine, right? That thing that spins, spins, spins. Because the ID says wash. Them. Jesus came to this world to wash you. He came to this earth to wash you. The identification is to wash you. He ID'd himself with washing you. At the end of the day, he wanted to teach 12 how to use their faith, but that was not the ID for you. The ID for you is wash you. Because after he taught them, he knew they would get it eventually. And they would write about it in a book and we would have something to see. But our ID is in washing you. Jesus wants to wash you. He wants to wash you. That's the point. So the ID is the middle spinner. Without that middle spinner, nothing would 
happen in the washing machine, right? Because we need things to be clean and without them, be, without them being washed, right? If you don't have a washing machine, you got to get a rub board and I mean scrub those things. You got to scrub those things. Otherwise, if you just sit them in a bucket, it would be the same thing as if you put it in a washing machine that did not have the inner spinner. If you sit it, it would be the same as if you sit in a bucket and expect a bucket to do the work. Some of us expect Jesus, after he already ID'd us, he said, washed us clean when he went to Calvary, because that, that was his identification. That was why he came here. His, he ID'd with the cross. So he washed us. It's only in you ID'ing with, your, with the cross when you come to know Jesus the way that he wants you to. When you come to know Jesus better. Because as I ID, not with my own cross, but with the cross that Jesus took up, I will understand how to carry my cross when I see it. I see the cross. I ID with, I, I with Jesus. And I see how he does it. I say, okay, this is my cross and now I can carry it in faith. But I can't do anything with my cross if I don't see how Jesus is. His point was to wash you. He taught 12 faith, but he was, his point was to wash you. God's job is to secure you. Because this, during washing, washing is not all that's what's going on. Look at I said that. I said it wrong. I'm, like, I'm excited. I'm, because of these images. Do it. I see God, what God is saying. I see it first. During washing, you're not just being washed. But during the whole process, you need to be secured. So you give yourself over when you receive salvation, you give yourself over, and then you are secured by God. So no matter what happens during the washing process, right here, because, because while Jesus was on earth, he wasn't just having faith, teaching faith on the cross. He was, I mean, he's full of faith, but he did not, that was not all he did. He also showed them what to do with faith. He actually had someone pull faith so strong, never had actually walked with him. She pulled faith out of him. He, sh- he t- was telling them, this is what happens when faith is pulled out of you. You will know when somebody touches you and you lose virtue. There should be people in the congregation pulling on you and you should know when they pull. I knew Sierra. I knew I had to talk to her. God told me to talk to her before church ended. During worship, actually. And this is no credit to me. I was worshiping. Maybe I was the only one that found myself. It's not that I'm a good teacher or, or a, a, I explain things well. Maybe it's because of the fact that I find myself at the well. Maybe I, 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 I can't look at I hear him saying my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but, 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 but holy trust in Jesus' name. Who got the sweetest frame today? Who got the sweetest frame? I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Is the sweetest frame of body? Is the sweetest frame of mind? Sweetest frame of spirit? Sweetest frame of soul? Sweetest frame of smile? Who's got the sweetest frame? Why is he saying, I dare not trust the sweetest frame? Because there's only pain that comes in trust in the, the sweetest frame. There's a, see, in the, the washing machine, why you need security at all times. The washing machine, the washing process, process is done in darkness. There's an inner spinner, right? And a spin, bang, 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 spinning, spinning, spinning. And clothes, honestly, the point to what I said about the tangential line that, the, that they will fly off in, clothes fly everywhere. We just don't see that. When we open up the washer, we open up the washer and we pull out clothes that are clumped together, right? Or whatever form they come in in your washer. Do you notice that although there's a spinner, spin, 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 it spins really fast, do you know that nothing is ever stuck to the spinner? Things can find themselves tangled around it and tied around it. There's a loose uh, a cord or string. They can find themselves tangled around the spinner. And in that, that's dangerous because if anything gets tied around the spinner, it can break the washer and cause you to either not have something to experience the washing process with or it can cause you to have to buy another washer. Of all the things that are most important in the cars, it's the transmission. It's the one thing that motors and keeps the car going. But in a washing machine, we trust that when we close that lid, 
As a matter of fact, if you don't close the lid and put everything in darkness, you will never get anything done. I put fabric softener in and run away cooking and then run back and started working on art and forgot to actually close the lid for hours. And so I said, wait a minute, and I know my, my wash should be done by now. I didn't hear anything. And I go in there and say, oh, happened once. I didn't close the lid. <laughs> I'm a photographer and I need and of course you learn dark room photography first and when you're developing a film and you're actually developing the pictures that you took with your film which I love because you cannot blame anybody for the process it puts you in complete control of everything unless you got a bad roll of film which thank God never happened to me you can't get a roll of film that was not closed completely and because it was, it was, it was exposed to light too soon. You take pictures, then go to the dark room, get some good images, then go to the dark room, develop that roll of film, get it back out and look at it and say, wait a minute, why is there a, a clear... And all you, can, all you can wish for at that point is that it does not affect the entire roll because it's rolled up. So usually if light hits it, there's a couple of inches of just film that won't be used, right? Because there are no frames on the last uh, couple of blocks for what we would be 35 millimeter film. There's no, there's no, there's no frames. For your, your camera stops itself and says no more frames allowed. It stops you at the security point. You cannot take pictures to the end of a roll of film. You can't do it. Your camera, no matter when it was invented, it is, it is, it is set to, 35 millimeter cameras, they're set to block that. There's a security uh, feature in perp and, and set in that will keep you from photographing past the, the point, the danger zone. And there's nothing wrong with the film. What they're saying is, if, if, if it be so, that this does happen, whatever you shoot past this point, it's to stranger danger in danger, right? We can't let you go past this point. There's an access point that you have passed that we can't let you proceed past this point. Are you tall enough for this ride? If I put you on this ride, can you hold on? There's an access point that we cannot let you pass that. It's not that you fail the test. <laughs> you fail the height requirement. So there's, a, there's an access point that we cannot let you pass that. It's not that you fail the test. It's correction. You fail the test because you are aged to go into the wilderness here, but you are not exercised. There's an access point. And we cannot let you go past that. Why did I say that? After, at 35 years old, I had 85-year-old faith and I acted out three-year-old results. 